Hi friends! First things first, I actually haven't seen Bridgerton yet, so please, no spoilers. But everyone is recommending it to me and asking my opinion on the costumes. And I know there are some kind of costume purists out there who don't really like the costumes because they're not historically accurate, but I am one of those people who loves them. I think they're fluffy and fun and kind of tacky and I am just, I'm living for it. I also really love history bounding. So when I saw Mood, yes, like the fabric place from Project Runway, came out with a Bridgerton inspired pattern. I thought it was the perfect opportunity to try and work a new era into my wardrobe. And even better, the pattern is totally free. So I will include a link to the pattern in the description box if you're intrigued and want to make this yourself. I will go ahead and make up the pattern and then I will give you my thoughts on the pattern itself and how it went together and the instructions that went with it. I think this pattern could be a really great resource for anybody looking to dip their toe into history bounding, especially Regency, or someone looking to do cosplay or theater on a budget, just make a long version. And I just really love that Mood takes the time to make and share these free patterns to make sewing more accessible. I will have to make a few tweaks to this pattern to make it maternity friendly. And so I will let you know where I do that and make tweaks to the pattern, just so you know you don't have to do that. For a little frame of reference, I would call my sewing skills about intermediate, but my pattern reading and comprehension skills are very much that of a beginner. I did not learn to sew using patterns, so that is a new skill I am trying to acquire. So hopefully, if you are a beginner like me, this video will help you see the parts that I struggled with and make them a bit easier for you. So without further ado, let's get started. I am totally in my pajamas. Don't judge me because it was a rough night. Max, eye teeth are coming in and based on her sleep schedule, I am inclined to believe that that is not a pleasant process. So, uh, what I'm doing right now is I've got the fabric going through the washing machine. That is something I don't really think I've mentioned on this channel before. I do a lot of thrifting of fabric, of different textiles like curtains and sheets and whatever. I always wash them before I make them into whatever just because people are gross. Even nicer higher end thrift stores you don't know where it came from so just give things a little wash. I have printed off my pattern and I'm just trimming up the edges so that I can tape it together and cut it all out. I have said it before and I will say it again and again and again and again. If you are regularly doing PDF patterns, I highly recommend getting a trimming board like this. I got mine at Joanne a couple years ago with a coupon, so it wasn't even that expensive. And it just makes the process of putting these PDF patterns together so much quicker than if I had to say, use scissors on all of these edges. I mean, you still have to use scissors once you've got it all taped, but it just, it cuts the process time down so much. So if you're regularly doing PDF patterns, I think it's worth, worth it and a good purchase. So let's do a little doodle here. Um... A little disclaimer, I am not going to be following their pattern exactly. I mean, I am going to follow the same basic shapes, especially for the top. But what I really love about this pattern is that the underlay is not super poofy on their pattern, but the overlay is. So that more kind of fitted look, I think, is a really great way to introduce people to kind of a Regency style without being too floofy because I think a lot of people get scared away by that really big kind of empire waistline and they say oh that'll never be flattering on me and here their pattern is saying no it'll be fine don't worry it's not 
too crazy. And I, I, I really like that. And I will not be able to use that feature because I'm pregnant, <laughs> unfortunately. So maybe I'll have to make this again after I have this baby. So for that, instead of having the kind of fitted bottom that they have with the poofy overlay, I am going to make both layers here quite poofy and gathered down to the waistband instead of one being more fitted and that's just to accommodate my pregnancy belly so I will not be able to comment on how that part of the pattern fits the sleeves I'm going to leave pretty much exactly the same as the pattern calls for because I think they are just so heckin cute to save money and fabric I think instead of doing how the pattern calls they have you kind of flat lining the sheer overlay to the contrast fabric underneath and then also have another lining on the other side of that. I think I'm going to cut out that third layer of the lining and make my background fabric for the sheer overlay be my lining. So I think I'm going to mess with the way this is finished. Uh, and change it from what the pattern calls for and add a little bit of trim at the neckline that the pattern doesn't call for to match the trim that we have going you know on the sleeves and such so that is my tentative plan for right now it is a little different than what the pattern calls for but I'll still be able to review the basic shapes and the pattern instructions the pattern doesn't have completely historical shapes. It doesn't have that swoopy back curve detail uh, with multiple pieces in the back. It's just one piece in the front. Baby hand, this is mama's. And uh, two pieces in the back instead of multiple pieces. But it's still got kind of that Regency silhouette. So I'm really excited about it. So here are my fabrics. I paid $3.99 for each of them from the thrift store. This one here is a tablecloth that has a little bit of texture to it and then it has these serged edges. This one here is a curtain that's sheer with these kind of satiny stripes on it and it is very slinky so I will have some fun working with that. This is what it looks like when they're layered on top of each other. So ignoring the general chaos going on upstairs right now, I just cut out my sleeves and I kind of came to a little dilemma. It's not a big deal, I've already figured it out. This is cut on the fold and this is cut face to face. So what I am going to do you can see here how I cut out the sleeves with the fabric folded over, so I have one of each. I'm just going to take this, fold it over, cut this pattern piece that way, like completely separate, and then fold this bottom one and cut them completely separate. So changing my fabric layout from the way it was before. First, I cut the bodice pieces out of the blue tablecloth to use as kind of a mock-up. I did have enough where if I made a mistake, I could cut it out again, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Then I went ahead and used some chalk and my ruler to transfer any pattern markings that I would need to pin out. Then I pinned everything together for a quick try on just to see if the pattern fits me the way it was or if I would need to make any adjustments to it. So I did not take footage of the fitting because of the nature of the garment. I didn't want to flash the whole world all of this that I got going on, but I do have to make quite a few adjustments to this pattern. 
I need to add length in a few areas. I need to pinch length from a few areas. I need to add extra here. It's, it's not too much work, but it is, it is work I have to do. The back fits basically perfectly. If I was going to do this again, I would probably add a half inch right here and then taper it out to here. But I don't see a reason to do that with this one. I think it's just fine the way it is. So here is my new pattern compared to the old pattern. Not impossibly different, but it definitely didn't fit me coming straight off the page. I did have to make a few changes. So if you have, you know, a moderate to small bust, this will probably fit you just fine. I do not have that. I have quite a large bust and that is where most of my issues came in. I needed to add length both sides. I needed to make this dart much steeper and I needed to add quite a bit of I don't know, swing is the word I'm looking for, to the arm side to make sure everything was all covered up. So that was all things that came from having a larger bust. I went ahead and cut out the new front pattern piece out of the blue tablecloth material. It fits so much better now, so I am feeling really good about the pattern. I am going to go ahead and cut it out of my sheer fabric now because I think I'm ready to do that. The pattern is a little wonky around the darts. I think it may give me some pointy boob, but it's kind of hard to tell. I just have it pinned together right now, not actually sewn. And that's always something I can pinch out later. So I'm just gonna leave the pattern the way it is and make alterations from there to the final garment. For putting the bodice together, I am gonna deviate from the pattern a little bit. I think I'm going to bag line the shoulder seams and the neck and back. Uh, to kind of hide some of those raw edges that won't be tucked into the lining layer later that I'm hoping to skip to save some fabric, and then flatline everything else like the pattern calls for and just serge it and have it tucked in on the underside. So I'm going to put together part of the bodice now and see if I can make that work, and then I'll check back in. For serger colors, I don't have blue, I only have white and gray. Um, this is what each of those looks like. I think I'm gonna go with the gray. Oh yeah, definitely the gray. Like you can barely even see it under there. So that's the, that's the one I'm gonna go with. I surged each piece individually just so that it would be easier to finish and that nothing would fray. Then I went ahead and assembled the bodice by first attaching the shoulder seams and then sewing the bodice lining and the sheer part of the bodice right sides together to bag it out. After a good press, I just did a row of understitching on the lining to keep everything from slipping and sliding around. So now that I have it bagged out like this, I am just going to treat the rest like it's one piece and flatline it. So put my darts in with these together raw ends all the way to the inside instead of towards each other. Oh boy, I am tired today. Last night I finished putting the bodice together and did a little try on and I was right. The darts are pretty weird so I pinched those out and I will fix those now. That was totally my fault messing up with the pattern so that is not the fault in the pattern at all. That was me adjusting the pattern and then not taking this into consideration. So I'm going to go ahead and fix those darts and I should start on the sleeves, but I took a little peek through my trim stash and I didn't actually find anything that I thought would go with this well. So I need to run out and buy a zipper and some trim before I can do this. Well, I don't need the zipper for the sleeves, but I need the trim just before I can start the sleeves. And so today I think I'm going to start on the skirt portion. I could not decide on a trim, so I put it up to an Instagram poll, and I am very happy with the outcome because I personally 
came to the conclusion that the shiny blue had more of a Bridgerton feel, so I'm very glad that everyone else agreed with me. I just finished cutting out panels for the skirts. I cut one a little longer than the other one because I knew I would need a little extra material in the front to accommodate my baby bump. So the back is a bit shorter than the front panel. I'm going to try and keep these serged edges so that it makes finishing extra easy. Okay, I hope this makes any sort of sense, but I've lined it up so that my hems are even, um, just offset a little bit with the top layer being longer. And so what I'm gonna do, here's my side seams and here's the center. I'm going to curve it to accommodate my belly from the top here instead of from the bottom. And I'm doing that just because it kind of makes sense. It's how 18th century skirts were curved to accommodate like bum pads and stuff. And I have no idea if it's a Regency thing at all, but it just kind of made sense to me. So I'm gonna go for it. One of my favorite ways to put in gathers is to take some silky cord like this and set your machine to very loose, wide zigzag stitches and put the cord under your foot and sew on either side of the cord, making sure not to catch the cord. And instead, you're just kind of creating a casing with the thread. I like this method for when you're feeling particularly lazy and have a large amount of fabric to gather, but don't necessarily want to do it by hand. Once you've got that kind of thread casing, you can mark where you need to line up your fabric pieces and just pull on the silky cord and it creates these gathers that you can then line up with any marks you need to on the other piece. Then you change out the foot on your machine to an invisible zipper foot and kind of fluff the gathers going in the right direction and just sew right along your cord without catching the cord. Before sewing, I put an anchor knot in the cord, and at this point, you can either try to untie it, or if you don't mind losing a little bit, just cut it off. Then, after a minimal amount of fussing, as long as you didn't catch the cord with your stitches, you can just pull it right out, and you have gathers. And then you can just rewind your cording and reuse it over again. You can see this kind of gathering doesn't give you the most even pretty gathers in the world, but it is quick and it does work. So it just helps if you have a very large piece of fabric you need to gather and don't particularly want to spend a lot of time on it. I also went ahead and sewed this trim down to the waist here. The picture on the pattern has this trim as more of a belt and I wanted mine to be permanent, so I sewed it on before putting the zipper in so that I could have finished edges here. And then I did go ahead and put the zipper in. Usually it's easier to sew the sleeves on and then sew the skirt on, but I really wanted the zipper to be in so that I could do some fittings with the sleeves because the instructions were a little confusing to me. So I did the skirt, then the zipper, now I'll do the sleeves. Now I'm just running a gathering thread along the marks from the pattern. I'm a little hesitant to put chalk on this sheer fabric, so I'm just kind of winging it against the pattern and hoping for the best. The pattern instructions say to gather this to your preference, uh, but they do mention 15 inches, I think for like a size 18 or something like that. 
and just out of curiosity I, I took a measuring tape and measured my bicep and set the measuring tape at 15 inches and that was pretty close to my bicep while still leaving me a bit of ease. So that is what I'm going to try here just to try it out and see how that fits since that's what is mentioned in the pattern. So the cool thing about using a stripe is that you can divide the length you need by the amount of stripes you have to make sure that your gathers are all even. Hello, I thought I would just do a little check in here because I did do a lot of stuff off camera. I have been following along with the sleeve instructions and so far so good. I have hit a snag, but I will talk you through what I did off camera first. So I added the trim here, I gathered the poof here, and I set it in to the sleeve. Now a few little things that are different from mine, because I adjusted the pattern the way that I did to fit my bust, my sleeves, I needed to gather a lot more than I should have needed to according to the pattern. And that's okay, it still looks fine, but this gathering on the underlay here is not something you will have to deal with. And because I am not going to be doing the second lining, this seam allowance will not be covered up and I just surged it real quick. So now we are at the part I am stumped on. The sleeve is set in and the next part of the instructions is double roll the bottom edge of your sleeve lining inward half inch and pin to the upper sleeve of your lining. This can be slip stitched or top stitched into place along the ribbon. I read that like seven times before I started this project because I like to read through all of the instructions before starting and it made no sense to me whatsoever. Now that I have the sleeve together, it makes a little more sense, but just because I'm not totally sure I know what they're saying and that I'm going to be following the directions correctly, I'm going to kind of walk you through what I think it's telling me to do just so you can see what I did and if it's not what I'm supposed to do and it turns out looking awful you know it's my fault and not the pattern's fault. So here is my sleeve. I'm gonna pull the lining out of the bottom. I think inward in this scenario is inward toward the rest of the sleeve and not inward toward the rest of the garment because if we put it in towards the sleeve and then slip stitch it in place it will cover the raw edge there so i think that's what i'm going to do just kidding i just reread the instructions again and it says to double roll which is more like how you hem a pair of jeans or something so i guess it could go either way it could go this way or this way and you would still not have an open, oh geez, I don't know. I don't know, I'll have to ponder that. Okay, I've come to a conclusion. I am going to double roll, not in toward the sleeve, but in toward the rest of the garment because if I double roll in towards the sleeve, you can see my sleeve finishing here and I don't love that. It's not awful, but I don't love it. And if I double roll this way, it's nice and clean. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't really get the end pin to the upper sleeve of your lining part. I'm wondering if that's just telling me to pin it like this rolled so that it's easier to stitch or if there's actually something deeper that I'm missing there. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it like this and hope for the best and hope that's what they meant. 
Okay, I'm sorry for just being a hot mess, but now I'm really heckin' confused because this is still like twice the width of my overlay now that it's gathered down. So I think what I'm going to do just for my sanity is to top stitch this down separately gather it a little and just tack it in place in some strategic places because I don't know what these instructions are trying to tell me and at this point I just I kind of want to get this done so I really don't know friends I'm sorry I hope you understand these instructions better than I do if you're trying to follow this because I am no help here Okay, I am back again and I changed my mind again. I did do the double roll and then top stitched it down separately, but as I was doing that, I made sure to put some cording in there that I will use to gather the sleeve lining to the sleeve overlay size, and then I will whip stitch it in place. And I just made sure that when I was kind of creating this casing-ish thing that I just left a little room so that I can pull this out when I'm done. So that's what I have right now. That's what I'm going with. That's not what the instructions were telling me to do at all, I don't think, but it's what I'm going with. And I can finally move forward. So that worked. I do have a little poof on my shoulder now. Uh, so I will do that over here on this side. I can't lie, I'm kind of annoyed because I did all of that work to make sure this ribbon is nice and neat and you can't even see it. So that's what it looks like when it's not poofed up. And this is what it looks like when it's poofed. I do, I do like the poof. I just feel like if I had known you wouldn't see the ribbon, I wouldn't have done quite so much work to make it look nice. So I'll just keep chugging along, I guess. At this point, I started following the rest of the pattern instructions for how to finish the bottom of the sleeves where you gather and then insert it into this little ribbon trim. So that is what that looks like. I put in this little line of top stitches here to hold down the seam allowance from the sleeve and I did top stitches because I thought it would make it look a little less fancy, but it really didn't. So the way I finished the sleeves does work. There's no raw edges or anything like that and from the outside it looks just fine. From the inside it's really not pretty though and it's not a standard of finishing that I usually hold myself to. So I thought I would just show you real quick how I would do the sleeves and put them together if I was going to do this again. If you understand what the pattern instructions are telling you to do and how to put this together, that is wonderful. Please do that. If not, if you're like me and it makes no sense to you, this is just how I would do it if I was going to do it again. So I would still first gather along this line, but I would only gather it to the length here. And then I would finish these separately, like it calls for, follow the rest of this, do my two time turn up that it calls for, but then I would use that as like a casing and put elastic in there and then attach this sleeve to this undersleeve, which they should be the same size then if you do it that way. And then the elastic is the size of your bicep and that'll just pull everything down. That's how I would do it if I were going to do it again. I think it'd be a lot cleaner than the solution I came up with this time. But like I said, if you understand what the pattern is trying to get you to do, that's totally cool too. Actually, that's even better. <laughs> I just really didn't understand it. So I kind of had to improvise and it's not the best. Thank you. 
I thought I would just do a quick little wrap up here. I have to be honest, I am not totally in love with this dress. Between the poofy sleeves and the fabric choice and the very shiny trim, it's a little fancier than I was expecting and that is totally on me. I don't know why I didn't have a clear vision of what it was going to end up looking like, but this was not it. I had been hoping for something a little more casual, a little more day to day and now I have this. So I do like it, I will get use out of it, it's just not what I was expecting and that's all on me. I think it lost a little bit of the Regency feel when I made the bust adjustment. I added length down here, which I think was totally fine, but I also added length at the neckline here to accommodate the bra that I wanted to wear with this dress. And I think that kind of made it lose a bit of the Regency feel because that low bust line is so iconic. But again, that's on me, not on the pattern. I am also not particularly satisfied with how I finished the sleeves. They look fine from the outside and they're not going to fall apart or anything like that, but from the inside it's just a little sloppier than I am usually happy with. Does that mean that the pattern instructions at that part aren't very good or that I'm just notoriously bad at understanding patterns? I don't really know. That being said, I did absolutely love this pattern. I think the shapes are amazing. I think the outcome really has that Bridgerton feel they were going for, and all of the pattern markings and everything like that lined up exactly how they were supposed to. So it actually did come together really easily in that sense. I just don't think that the pattern instructions were necessarily beginner friendly, which is fine as long as you don't go into the project expecting them to be beginner friendly. You know, it had like insert zipper now, which a beginner probably wouldn't be able to do without a little more guidance. I felt like a lot of time the pattern instructions were a little sparse and I was kind of doing guesswork based on the picture that they had provided. So I did think this pattern was very easy to alter in order to save fabric like I did where I cut out the lining layer and just did the two layers in the bodice. So that's cool. It is a pattern that is capable of being easily manipulated. So I do really like the pattern in the fact that it creates a very nice garment, but I would just go into it next time with the expectation that the instructions aren't necessarily beginner friendly and I will need to kind of improvise on my own. I do think I'm gonna make this again. I think I'll make it after I have the baby so I can try out the tighter fitting underlay and I think I'll make it out of something like a sheer cotton so that it's a little more casual feeling. But I do like this pattern, I do recommend it. Just keep in mind there are some things you may need to work around. And of course, I love that they have a free pattern like this available. I think it's great that Mood is doing their part to make sewing and in a way costuming more accessible. Well, I definitely get Bridgerton vibes from this dress and maybe I will actually have time to sit down and watch it one of these days. Bye friends.